The next step is to install the shift rails, but before we do that, we're going to change the uh, slider blocks on the shift rails first. So the shift pads just will pop right off. And as you can see, there's a couple little dimples in the shift fork where um, the, the, these proud little bumps of the pads fit into. So when you install them, make sure that you install them in the right orientation. So we'll take our old ones away. So I think the easiest way to put these in is uh, first to fit the forks onto the main shaft assembly and uh, and then to take this as a as a unit and place it in. So that's what I've done. I put this together on the uh, on the bench and I'm gonna lift it up as an assembly and put it put it in together. Okay so now the shift rail with the shift forks is installed <clears throat> and of course before I button everything up I have to still install the uh, shift detent which on this transmission goes in here unlike uh, some of the T56 transmissions where you see the shift detent mechanism is over here so the next part is this shift rail I'll put that in now sorry one quick thing before I put this shift rail in there is a um, a pad to replace in between these two smaller forks. So we're going to change that pad first. Now that the shift rails are installed, it's time to lay a bead of sealant around the bottom and install the main case. Um, on some cars, uh, you also need to install the shift block uh, in in here as you're installing the case um, but with the CTS the shift rail is two pieces so I can uh, I can actually just do that after I do the case so uh, I'm gonna lay a bead of sealant down and then uh, install the case okay so the main case is on um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lift it up a little bit. I'm going to tip it over just a little bit and I'm going to install some of the screws in from underneath to hold those pieces together while I finish assembling it. And then I'm going to um, actually rotate it on the table so that all of my um, so, that, so that it's sitting flat again and that all of the uh, holes line up at the bottom because I'll want to install my my threaded rod again um, that I used for adjusting the, the uh, shaft clearances when I adjust the counter shaft extension clearance, the piece that sits up here. All right, so next up is to put the shift rail uh, bolts back in these two holes, but first we're gonna add some, uh, some Loctite. Um, it looks like what was on there before was red Loctite, so that's what I'm gonna reuse. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna throw those in there. And then basically the, the rest of the tail section is just the opposite of what I did in the uh, disassembly. Okay, so I put in the um, shift rail uh, shoulder screws and I inserted the, uh, the shifter um, cup cast part, I forget what it's called. Um, I, I should note that while I was not wrong about being able to get that in after the case was in place, it was a pain in the butt. So. Um, I would recommend that uh, if you are doing this on a CTS case or something similar where the where the shaft is in two pieces, um, you should still try to put that on as you're installing the uh, the case, the body. Um, so next up, <clears throat> the next thing to install is the counter shaft extension assembly, and you do that in conjunction with um, this first shift fork that goes on on. The, the shift rail. So those go in as a, as a, as a set like this. Um, so um, 
So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take these pieces off and change out the uh, synchros in here. Um, and there's a there's also a needle cage bearing in there. Um, I, there may be one on this side as well. So I have to uh, take that apart and change those out. And that would follow the same general process that I showed on the main shaft. So I'm not going to bother uh, filming that because it's exactly the same method. Okay. So the counter shaft extension is now installed, um, as is the 5-6 sh shift fork. Um, now it's probably, and I, I obviously I put on the uh, circ clip that holds that on. Now is a good time to check and just make sure that the uh, shift rail is loose and everything that that'll help make sure that everything is uh, you know lined up and hasn't fallen off its position down there um, and then uh, in order the next few things are uh, the five six gears uh, then the reverse shift fork and then up here we have um, some parts of the reverse synchro the reverse gear um, and then the tail case. So, uh, and then also before I put the tail case on, I'm going to change the seal. So I, there's nothing uh, magical about this. I still do need to change the the uh, reverse synchros. Um, so and and, uh, and dogs. Okay. So um, little complication. Um, one of the issues that I had when I took this apart was I noticed that the 5.6 gear came off, and actually you saw it in the video, the 5.6 gear came off very easily. Um, so that's uh, not an, a totally uncommon problem on the T56s. There was, uh, there's several people that have mentioned that their 5.6 gear was loose, and if you leave it loose for too long, it can really damage the the splines on the main shaft and on the gears and you need to uh, replace both of them. So I didn't want to put it back together like that because um, the the splines looked really good still so I sent the main shaft out to Texas um, Drivetrain Performance and uh, they they can basically add some some weld to it and then they machine it back down to spec but slightly proud of where it was. Unfortunately, now that 5.6 gear is, is being a real bear, and it doesn't want to um, doesn't want to go down with the mallet. So I'm going to set it up in the in the press and press it down. And okay, so now the uh, 5.6 gear is pressed on, and uh, probably never coming off. <laughs> and so the uh, next step is to um, deal with the reverse um, fork pads and the reverse um, slider um, dogs and, and clips. So there's the rest of the uh, internals pretty much assembled. Um, all that's left is uh, on that is to go through the process of bolting on the tail cover and uh, inserting our, our threaded rod uh, through so that we can test the uh, and measure for the end play of the counter shaft extension. And then there are shims uh, inside, of, um, inside of that bore right there where the white cap is. So we'll pull that out and uh, adjust the clearance with those shims there. And then once that's adjusted, uh, we'll finish bolting it back up and we'll be all done. So we're back to adjust the clearance on the counter shaft extension uh, and uh, in order to do that you do have to remove um, the reverse idler gear uh, and it's it's casting to give you enough room to um, to pull the race out and uh, remove the the spacers that are in there, the shims that are in there. So, so the end play tool <clears throat> that we made out of the uh, M12 threaded rod is is now threaded all the way through the countershaft and into the countershaft extension. 
and uh, and I put the nuts down there so if I wanted to I could get uh, a little pry bar under there to pull it out and then we're gonna we're gonna give this a little bit of a tap to set the, to set the bearings if you don't do that you'll uh, you'll read an, an incorrectly low amount of end play uh, so now we'll just we'll get this thing back into position and uh, measure our actual end play Okay, the dial indicator's <clears throat> been set uh, after tapping on the, the tool to make sure that everything was seated. It's around minus. Okay, so it looks like it's a total of about 68 thousandths of travel. Um, you want about four and a half thousandths max. So, I need a shim that's about 63 to 65. Alright, so these two shims here give me a total stack of 63 thousandths. So I'm gonna um, take off my my indicator, I'll take out my tool, I'm gonna put my the plug back in um, with some Teflon tape and, uh, and then I'll flip this thing back up and uh, we'll install the shims. So before I take the shims and put them um, in the spot for the counter shaft extension, I'm actually going to take this out and uh, I'm going to install the, um, the tail shaft seal first. Um, so here's the new seal. Originally the kit that they sent me had the wrong seal in it, so might be worth uh, double checking that when you open the box. There's a, a different seal for the CTSV than some of the other T56s. Um, so we'll we'll set set this in place <coughs> and then <coughs> flip it over and reassemble um, the bearings and shims and uh, the reverse idler. So with the seal installed, we'll now reassemble our countershaft shims and bearings. First it goes the plastic piece, then our shims, and then our bearing race. Now we'll install the reverse idler. And uh, if you want you can change your uh, needle bearing, which I will do. There's really nothing wrong with this one, but since I ordered a new set, I might as well go ahead and put the new one in. So now I'll just uh, throw some Loctite on these and put those back in. So with the tail case assembly ready to go back on, um, before I bolt that in, I'm actually going to use this as a good opportunity to uh, add the oil back to the transmission. <coughs> um, the CTSV T56 fluid capacity is specced at 4 quarts. So I'm going to pour 4 quarts in there. And, uh, and then bolt the tail housing back on. So we're at the final button up stages. Um, I've added some Teflon tape to the oil, what I believe is the oil temperature sensor. Um, that will thread in there. Uh, I'll tighten that up in a moment. And then all that's left for, uh, for this is to put the, the uh, drive shaft uh, adapter on the back of this, which is this guy right here. So he'll uh, he'll slide down onto those splines, and then the the lock nut um, will go on top of that. I'll add some Loctite to that. This section is the most different from car to car out of the whole transmission. So, um, and then after that, I just have to put my shifter back on. Um, before I do so, 
I, uh, I intend to make some improvements um, to the CTSV's pathetic attempt at a shifter linkage. Uh, so uh, this is pretty much it though. Uh, after that, this is all done and ready to go back in the car. So hopefully this video was, was helpful to you. And, uh, and if you think so, please click like. Have a great day.